This presentation is just on some consideration for using server-side solutions. We spent most of this class, of course, working locally, but in the real world, of course, we want to end up on a server. Earlier in class, in Chapter 2, I gave you a little presentation of using an FTP client and some of the hosting services that are out there that you can get control panels and you can get for very little money, probably about $5 a month or so, to host a website that can go out to the web. There are certain things we can do on a server that we can't do locally. We have to remember that sites are deployed on the web. One of the key things is, is we can collect data from multiple users and we can make that data available to all or some of the users. And the cool thing about databases, relational databases, is they handle something called concurrency. This allows more than one user at a time to hit the data table. Not necessarily the exact same piece of data, but the table. If you have a spreadsheet that has information about your travel options, if you're a service that provides some kind of travel options, and you have it on an Excel spreadsheet, you can't have 100 customers trying to access that spreadsheet at a time, but you can have 100 customers trying to access a table with travel information. It's very good. Relational databases on a server are extremely powerful. You can do uh, user authentication, which is something you can't do on your own PC. I suppose you could have someone over and ask for their driver's license, but that's not going to work in a practical way. Now, one nice thing is that people can send you money. So what shopping carts are for. You can use pre-canned shopping carts with your website, or you can write one of your own with PHP. And you can see there that Steve Perry's first rule of web design is make it clear on every page how a user can send you money. That's if you're selling something. Again, you can run these apps from anywhere. You can log into a website at any location and pick up where you left off. That's what I do with my mail, Yahoo Mail. That's one of the killer apps that's out there, web-based email. I have my own scheduling information that I wrote in a PHP MySQL area, and I can get to it from any internet-connected PC or Mac. I can log on and see my schedule and update it. So it's really a very, very powerful tool. But the key thing is now you have the keys to the kingdom. You can use PHP and MySQL to create the kinds of things that other people will use on the internet, and hopefully it'll be a gain for you as well. Now, as these multiple devices are getting more prevalent, we have, of course, the web, but we have smartphones, iPhones, Android devices, the same things, iPads and Android-based pads. More and more, these are going to be available to data that we have deployed on the internet. We're going to format it. HTML5, which is not a full standard yet, but it's deployed fairly widely by a lot of the browsers, you can actually develop some apps for an iPhone or an iPad or an Android device as well using properties in the HTML5. So you can get a lot of apps built just that way with material that you almost already know. So stay tuned for that. I'm sure there'll be more features that grease the path towards developing for those devices using PHP and MySQL. You also can connect your application to other applications through services, web services. I didn't get into that here in this class. That's an advanced topic, but there's a lot of information out on how to do that. There's a wide range of powerful functions that go way beyond what was covered here. I'd peruse some books, look at the php.net site. There are things to do networking, build web forms. One thing you can do with PHP that I didn't cover was coding object-oriented PHP. Now, since I know how to code in a true object-oriented language, Java, I'm not fully impressed with the way PHP has implemented this. It does work, but it is kind of an add-on to the original language, and some people like to code that way. So that may be something that you want to pursue further and bring that into your coding. That's the end of this presentation on some server-side solutions and some things to think about as you take your work out to the world.